Welcome back. Last week we talked about renal dialysis and how renal, renal dialysis is similar or different to the kidney function. In this video we're going to go over this syllabus dot point which says outline the role of the hormones aldosterone and antidiuretic hormone ADH in the regulation of water and salt levels in the blood. What I thought, thought, thought beforehand is I just go over that word hormone again to make sure we know what that means. Um, hormone was anything that is produced by the brain or by the gland. So what can happen, two things can happen. Either it's produced directly by gland or it's um, produced in the brain area and then sent down to a gland. What it does, a hormone is a chemical messenger. And that chemical messenger travels in the bloodstream and goes from the bloodstream to the cell it has its effect on. Right. So if you imagine this green dot here is the hormone. I'll travel all the way to the cell, go into the cell, if it's a um, fat-based hormone, and then tell the cell what to do. So if this maybe were, let's say, growth hormone, so GH for growth hormone, it would actually tell the cell to grow, or to, so either to grow or to duplicate a number. Right? That's just one example of a hormone. And the two hormones we're going to cover are the antidiuretic hormone and aldosterone. So remember, hormone was something produced by glands, usually, and that travels in bloodstream to the cells, and, this, and they will tell the cell what to do. And they give it a message, so it's, that's why they're called the chemical messengers. So the first hormone we're going to cover is someone called aldosterone. Now, aldosterone was produced by the adrenal gland. So as I mentioned earlier, glands often produce hormones. This is where it's produced. And um, if you look at the actual location, the adrenal gland is located just above the kidney itself. So this is the kidney, this is the adrenal gland. But you still need to have an actual blood vessel connection between adrenal gland and kidney. So what you can imagine is this yellow, yellow dot here, that's your aldosterone, it'll get produced and then travel into the kidney and then have its effect in the kidney. Right? So what aldosterone actually does, aldosterone increases sodium retention. And that word retention, what that means, is just holding on to, or it's basically it tries to keep on, um, it tries to make sure that the urine loses less sodium. We keep on, we hold on to sodium, that's what retention refers to. And the more sodium we keep, the more water is reabsorbed too. And I'm going to go over why that happens in a second, but the more sodium we keep, the more water is reabsorbed. So if you look at this picture over here, what I've drew drawn is just that beginning part of the um, nephron. This was the beginning part. We've got the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule. And if you remember that at the glomerulus, you have all that stuff being forced into the Bowman's capsule. So there's going to be lots of different stuff, amino acids, glucose, um, uh, water, salts. But because right now we're only talking about sodium, so salt and water, I've just focused on those two. So you can imagine these, uh, the brown is the sodium and the blue is the water. These are forced into the Bowman's capsule, right? And this part of the, so that bluish part, the light blue part, is called the proximal tube. And close to proximal tubes, you always have your blood cells, your blood vessels. Now usually, um, so if I'll show you on the actual diagram where this is as well. This is right here. And the thing I want to focus on is this part. The fact that sodium and water can be pumped back into the blood vessel. And that happens because of the antidiuretic hormone, uh, because of aldosterone, the, the hormone aldosterone. So what happens is, if you look at here, the concentration, there are three solutes, so three sodium molecules in the blood vessel here. So here is three of the brown ones. And in the actual distal tube, we also have three. One, two, three. So problem is at the moment, if you remember osmosis was from a low solute to a high solute. So at the moment no water would travel into the bloodstream. But we want to retain water, we want to keep water and, and sodium, but at the moment it wouldn't happen. And sodium itself would not diffuse over because the concentration is equal. For diffusion to happen we would have to have a high concentration on one side and low concentration on the other side, but at the moment it's even. But what we can do, so if that red arrow here is active transport, what we can do is we can actually actively transport one of these sodium molecules into the blood vessel. So now you can imagine one of them has left 
the distal tube, so left the nephron, and it's gone into the blood vessel. So now we have four here and two in the actual uh, tube. So that means we have low solute here, so low solute here, and high solute in the blood vessel. So what does it mean for water? So those blue molecules, they will actually start traveling over. Right? So they'll travel in the direction of the blood because they're going from a low solute to high solute. So you see these blue water molecules will travel. That's what I mean here with aldosterone increases sodium retention. So that's what aldosterone does. And aldosterone makes the active transport happen when it comes to making the sodium molecules go from the distal uh, proximal tube into the capillaries next to it. But what, um, what happens automatically afterwards is water reabsorption because water goes from low solute to high solute and an active transport had made sure that we have that happening. Right? So that was the role of aldosterone. Um, and the reason why we, why we need aldosterone is actually to increase our water volumes um, and our blood pressure. So what I have here, obviously if we have aldosterone that will increase our water volumes in our blood because now we've reabsorbed all that water. So that water is reabsorbed, which increases our water volume. So what you can imagine, sometimes we have, uh, this is a blood vessel here. So the red was a blood vessel and the pinkish was the plasma itself. And plasma is mostly water. Right? The problem is we want to keep a, our blood pressure at a good rate at all times. We want to keep it at a high rate. At the moment, the blood vessel is only half full. So you can, ima you can imagine a hose only drawn up to half power. It's not going to be too strong. Right? So it, the, the, the pressure... Uh, it's not going to be. It's quite going to be quite low. So at the moment we have low, low pressure here, which is bad because we have a normal blood pressure. But because of whatever reason we have a low blood pressure. So if we uh, produce aldosterone, what will actually happen is sodium retention will occur, which means water reabsorption, and water reabsorption same as plasma reabsorption. So you can imagine now it's half full, but if we produce aldosterone, it will be full. Right. So now we had low pressure beforehand. That's gone, that's removed, and now everything is fine, everything is normal again, so we've got normal, normal blood pressure. So the reason why we produce aldosterone is to, um, to regulate blood pressure. Again, the blood pressure is important because that's how fast the blood flows. If it flows too slow, then you can imagine all those good things, all those nutrients in the blood will not reach places fast enough to regulate blood flow, uh, blood pressure, and aldosterone. So if you have low blood pressure, then we will increase the amount of aldosterone. So we'll increase the amount of aldosterone produced to increase that sodium retention, which then increases our water reabsorption. And that means our plasma, our blood volume will go up, and that means our blood pressure has been normalized again. Right? So that was the aldosterone. That was one hormone. And the other hormone you just need to know is the antidiuretic hormone. So this one right here. And now the antidiuretic hormone is actually produced by the hypothalamus. It travels down from the hypothalamus, travels down into the pituitary gland. Um, the pituitary gland is the one that stores it, and if we're dehydrated, we will release more of this ADH, which I've drawn in blue, and if we're overhydrated, we're going to produce less of this ADH. Right? So I will go through why as well, I'll explain that, but if we are dehydrated, so too little water means we will produce more ADH, and too much water means we produce less ADH. And that ADH then goes from the bloodstream, so that reddish thing, into the kidney where it has its effect. Right? So um, hormones, ADH is a chemical messenger, it will go to its area and then have its effect. So what it actually does, it increases the permeability of the collecting duct, which means water flows back. So you can imagine you have your urine traveling down here, and urine can either be dilute or concentrated. Remember, dilute means it has lots of water in it. And usually, actually you would have lots of, um, you could have lots of salt around it here, lots of salt. That would usually go from low solid to high solid, so it would usually actually leave the collecting ducts. So it would usually go this way. But these are, are you can imagine that they're, they're shut, right? So they have no holes. There's no way that the water can actually pass through normally. Right? So these are, it's not possible for water to flow past because it's, it's shut. Like it's, um, water can't penetrate. But what this ADH hormone does, so the stimulus, so when it's released, is when you have low levels of water. It um, goes to the collecting ducts and actually opens them up. Now, if it's open, 
and water can flow from low solid to high solid. So I'm going to quickly go that over that again in this diagram. So what you can imagine here, this sodium I drew in or in brown. And you can imagine that it's a huge block of sodium all around this collecting duct. The collecting duct is the thing in light blue. In the collecting duct, we have collected all our urine. Right, so that's, that's going down, so it's going this way, the, the urine is going this way. And usually, because it's no way that there's no opening, water can't flow. Even though there's a high solid, so it's high solid obviously inside, uh, high solid around it, and low solid inside, usually water go, travels from low solid to high solid, um, because sodium is a solute. But it's not possible for water to do that because there's no openings. But what ADH does, that this hormone, will come there and then will actually make some openings, so make some holes. So you can imagine there's just going to be some, some holes in here, some holes in the actual collecting duct. And that allows water to flow back. So water will flow back out. So which means they're not going to be lost in the urine. We're going to be able to conserve that in our body. And that's good because if we're dehydrated, if we're dehydrated, that means we don't want to lose even more water. So this ADH is uh, produced if we want to um, conserve water. We don't want to lose water in our urine. Whereas if we have drunken way too much, obviously this is not good if this happens because we don't want to be able to conserve, uh, keep on to hold of on our water if we have drunken too much, if we're overhydrated. So if we're overhydrated, then we produce less ADH. But we do produce more ADH um, if we are dehydrated, if we want to be able to bring that water back into our body. So this is our body here. This, this part, the brown part, and the tube would obviously be the stuff that we'd be excreting. Right? So to recap, we have aldosterone, the outline roles of hormones, aldosterone and antidiuretic hormone in the regulation of water and salt levels in the blood. Aldosterone increases sodium retention, and by increasing sodium retention, it increases water reabsorption because water follows sodium, which is a solute. Uh, and by doing so, it also helps increase our blood pressure. So that was aldosterone. Antidiuretic hormone increases the permeability of collecting ducts, so it opens these holes in the collecting duct to make sure water can pass back into our body. Um, so if we're dehydrated, that means we're going to produce more ADH so more water can flow back. But if we're drunken too much, we make sure we produce no ADH or less ADH to make sure it stays shut and all that water is lost in the, in the urine itself. So hopefully that made sense.